morning, everybody. Kind of a wintry day today, which is perfect setting for our topic. It was on this date in 1886 that Clarence Birdseye was born, and he's the one who figured out flash freezing for food. New Englanders were pretty good at cutting ice and they had lots of water to cut ice in and they were also good at storing ice. They had figured out that sawdust was a really good insulator so ice would keep into the summer. Frederick Tudor grew up in Massachusetts. He becomes known as the Ice King and his idea was to ship ice to warm parts of the world and try to make some money. So he had lots of sawdust at his disposal. That was the key insulator. Lumbering was common all through the New England states and we're reminded of that by the pine cone that's on the top of the Massachusetts State House. Because he lived in the Boston area, he had access to ships in Boston Harbor. So he had access to ice, lots of sawdust, also to ships. So he decided to ship ice to Martinique. This was his first attempt, but it failed because people had no idea what to do with ice. They'd not heard of an ice to drink, and the ice melted when it got there. He hadn't figured out storage. But all of these obstacles are overcome. This is a Tudor ice factory, storage place at the end of a big pond. They cut the ice and store it and then ship it and it shipped all over the world including India and this is a ice house that's still standing on the eastern coast of India. India was a big market for Mr. Tudor. When the Civil War was finished and the railroad era got going in a big way people realized if they put ice in railroad cars they could preserve food and ship it and one of the reasons Chicago became such a a great beef hub, these are the, the stockyards, is because it was already a rail hub and now with ice and railroad cars beef could be shipped all over the country. So the Iceman was common in the big cities. He'd come to your house with those cool tongs and you would put the ice in your ice box which was an early version of a refrigerator. Now the electric refrigerator as we know it made its debut in the 1920s more or less so this signals the end of that ice era, but it was a color, colorful era in our history. Our story now moves up to Newfoundland and Labrador. It's really cold up there in the winter, can be 40 to 50 below zero. And Clarence Birdseye, whose birthday is today, December 9, he moved up there with his family. And he was sort of an eccentric fellow. And he liked to try all kinds of things, and he got really good at ice fishing. And one thing he noticed when he would pull fish out at 40 degrees below was that the fish would freeze almost right away. And then it would taste really fresh. So he came up with what we now call flash freezing. If you freeze food really fast, really cold, it will taste really fresh. And the reason is that it preserves the molecular structure of whatever you're freezing. He turned his attention to fishing boats and how can you do something with the fish right off the boat. So he came up with a conveyor belt that blew really cold air on the fish on the top belt. It would drop to the bottom belt and then into some kind of storage container. He formed a company called the General Seafood Corporation and he focused on fast freezing fish fillets. They were a big hit and in fact he was so successful General Foods bought his company in the 1920s but kept his name Bird's Eye. Now Howard Johnson was a man who lived in Quincy Mass. He had opened up with the Clam Shack, eventually decided to have restaurants and in the 1960s hired Jacques Pepin, newly arrived from France, to work in the test kitchens to see if they could come up with a way to have food taste really good but also be frozen in an industrial capacity. And that's what Jacques Pepin did. He worked in Howard Johnson's test kitchens. And the food was pretty good. Combination of Jacques and industrial freezing. 
So the next time you're at your grocery store and you look at all that frozen food, think of Clarence Birdseye fishing up in Labrador and 40 degrees below zero.